Welcome to the Senate Minute, a weekly update to help keep Hoosiers informed about the Indiana General Assembly and engaged in our legislative process. This is Elizabeth Voss coming to you from the Senate Majority Communications Office. This week, the Indiana General Assembly wrapped up the first half of the 2018 legislative session. At this point, bills that have passed the Senate will move to the House of Representatives to be voted on and vice versa. For this special halftime episode of the Senate Minute, we're going to check in on some of the key bills for the Republicans' legislative agenda. One of the high-profile bills so far this session is Senate Bill 221, which was authored by Senator Aaron Houchin, and it deals with the INSPECT prescription monitoring program. Indiana and the entire country are in the midst of an opioid crisis. Senate Bill 221 aims to combat this crisis by requiring doctors to check Indiana's prescription drug monitoring program, which we call INSPECT, before they prescribe opioids for their patients. INSPECT allows the prescriber to search the history of a patient's prescriptions. This way, the prescribers can know if a patient already has an opioid prescription from another provider or if a patient has a history of excessive opioid use. Currently, it's optional for prescribers to choose if they want to register and search with INSPECT. Senate Bill 221 has been assigned to the House Committee on Public Health, and you can track its progress on the Indiana General Assembly website. Another item on the legislative agenda for this session is school funding. I was able to sit down with Senator Ryan Mishler to discuss one of his bills on this topic, which is Senate Bill 189. Um, Ryan Mishler, I represent Senate District 9, which is uh, St. Joe, Marshall, Elkhart, and Kosciuszko counties. Perfect. So we're here to talk about Senate Bill 189. Could you explain to us, Senator, what exactly will Senate Bill 189 do for Indiana? It addresses the issue of the increased enrollment in the school funding formula. So we had uh, 6,000 more students than estimated go into traditional public schools. And then we had 3,000 less than estimated in charter schools and 800 less than estimated in the choice program, which left us with a net increase of 2,200 students over what we estimated. Okay, so what this bill does is it's going to, it's going to give more funding since we underestimated that. Um, the schools will have enough funding to cover all these students? So the per pupil funding goes down, so every school will see a a decrease in their per pupil funding. So this backfills that to address the 2,200 more students to take that per pupil amount back up. Okay, all right. So we're increasing the budget by up to $25 million to make up for this enrollment gap. And where exactly is this $25 million coming from? So in last year's budget, we allowed for the transfer of up to $25 million a year from the tuition reserve fund, of which there's over $300 million in there right now. And we could transfer up to $25 million a year if the choice program would cause a decrease in the per student amount in the foundation. So all we're doing is we're adding that we can also use that $25 million a year if we underestimate the enrollment over the biennium. So the schools that have more students enrolled are obviously going to benefit from this because they'll be getting more money from this tuition reserve fund, but what about the schools who have fewer students than predicted? Will they be affected negatively by this? No. Because we we put in the budget we're going to spend 7.1 billion the first year. And when you add 2,200 more students, as I said, it takes the per student amount down. So without this bill, every, every school is prorated down. So with the bill then, um, every, by backfilling it, every school then will be prorated back up. So even if you have a declining enrollment, you'll still get excess money due to this bill. So every single school in the state of Indiana will get more money based on the number of students they have. To read about the other items on the legislative agenda, you can visit indianasenaterepublicans.com. Remember, you can track the progress of these bills and others by going to www.iga.in.gov and using the search bar in the top right-hand corner. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the Senate Minute on your Apple Podcasts app or listen at indianasenaterepublicans.com. Just click on the Media Room tab and then click on the Podcasts button. 
Join us next week to learn more about the bills being heard in the great state of Indiana. For the Senate Majority Communications Office, this is Elizabeth Voss. Have a great week.